Hey everybody, Jason Wright with another episode of ThreatWise TV. And today we are talking about Duo, our multi-factor authentication or MFA solution. And we have some big announcements coming for Duo users and those prospective Duo users. We now have Duo password lists and we all know passwords suck, right, Ted? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Ted Keatsman here from the Duo team to talk to us about how we are making a transition to a completely passwordless scenario. So uh, Ted, talk to us a little bit about what we're announcing and how this is all working. Totally. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jason. So happy to be here. So um, back uh, a couple months ago at, at Cisco Live, we announced our intention to build passwordless, which is really big. Passwordless is going to be the new authentication technology, at least I believe. Um, you know, moving into the future, we can all kiss passwords goodbye. Um, how it works is, is you know, traditionally an MFA company like Duo, we're using your username and password, and then we're typically tapping into something you have, like a phone or a, a, a hardware or a security key um, as your second factor. But in the passwordless world, as we're transitioning to, we're probably going to start using biometrics and something you have, so a device and a biometric, and remove that password from the equation. Um, which is going to be a big deal for a couple of reasons. One, it's annoying to remember passwords. It's annoying to type in passwords. It's annoying to rotate your password. So as, an e as a user, it's never been a great experience. And, and a huge weakness for network security, right? I mean, getting in, getting a password is, uh, is a big way to, uh, to attack and, and a very successful one uh, as far as all the, the methods out there. I think our audience knows the pain that we're all experiencing with it for <laughs> sure. But why don't you uh, show us how it works and what it looks like, man, because I'm excited to show everybody. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, cool. Let me share my screen here. And I like to start the, the demo just by saying, here, let's, let's look at what authentication is like today. And then we'll, we can move into that part of the infomercial where it's like what life will be like um, moving forward. So this is, you know, Duo has worked really hard to do this smoothly. So this shouldn't look that painful. But this is what multi-factor looks like a lot of times today. You're typing in your username and password. And this is probably correct. This look at this. This is probably like 34 characters. You know, That's some you, you have to have a special character. You have to have a bunch of capitals. So even if you're copy and pasting that from a password vault, this is still sort of annoying piece of authentication. From there, um, Duo lets you simply say, "Hey, you know, send me a push. I want to perform my second factor this way, that way." So you get a login request, and you can approve that, and you're through. That's not terrible. But it still has this cumbersome password step. So in the future, where we want to move is doing things um, in a more seamless, passwordless fashion. So let me let me show you what logging in um, without a password would look like. Still, you know, coming to a browser, you have a work application like Box, let's say. Um, here, you just type in your username. There's no password field. You hit Next, and you hit your Touch ID on your computer and you're through. That's it. Fastest demo in the West. Um, it is all it is, is a single gesture where you're just touching your touch ID and you're through. So it, it seems like it's kind of moving to a single factor authentication of the biometric. Is that accurate? Actually, that, that's a really good question. And if anyone's ever positing that passwordless is a single factor to you, that's you may want to raise an eyebrow at that. Passwordless should still be um, two factors. So while it looks and feels like a single factor because you're just touching your touch ID, the second factor is the device which is also registered. So let me actually show the second demo which should um, uh, make that a little more clear. When you okay. go to register password uh, for passwordless authentication, the first time, so let's say this is your first time doing passwordless auth, um, you're still going to have to do um, a password. And this is you're bridging the password world with passwords to the passwordless world. You log in here at Duo. We're still going to enforce that you do multi-factor at this point. We want you to to know you are who you say you are before um, we're letting you do anything passwordlessly. So that's um, you're verified, and now you can say, "I want to set up passwordless authentication. I'm tired of passwords." So to set it up, you can choose to do your Touch ID. Um, so in this case, use Touch ID. And what you're doing now is both registering your um, your biometric, but also registering this laptop, the one that you're actually um, going to the site from now. And so your two factors moving forward are going to be um, your biometric, 
one factor and the device you're accessing from your second factor, which you have. Um, so that's a great question. It's still two factors. And now the two factors are biometric and device. All right. So it's still, so we are still maintaining a two factor authentication environment, a multi-factor authentication environment, uh, which is fantastic. So, uh, glad to hear that. And if anybody, uh, tells me otherwise, I'll tell them to come, come watch this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. So I have one last thing to, to show, and then we can dig into a couple more questions about Passwordless too. But the, the last thing I wanted to show is, you know, I want to make it clear to folks that Passwordless isn't going to happen tomorrow. I feel like some people are talking about this on the market where they're going, hey, just rip and replace everything and do Passwordless. And you can, passwords are um, a thing of the past. You'll never use one again. That's just not the case. There's going to be this probably years long transition period where there are passwords in your environment, but you're reducing your reliance on them. You're, you're increasing use cases where you're doing passwordless. And Duos want, wants to be really thoughtful about that. So one of the things that we're already thinking about is say, hey, what happens if the biometric isn't available or the biometric, um, you know, it's smudging, it's not working, it's failing. What do you do in these cases? You don't wanna lock someone out forever. So you can return back to a secure form of authentication that maybe um, uses a, a still a shared secret. So in this case, hey, let me try to use my touch ID. Um, in this case, it's not working. I click it, doesn't work. I click it, doesn't work. I can cancel out of that and do another option to securely log in. And let's say if they have a security key, they can do that. But if they really need to, we think it's important to allow, you know, in this transition time, um, to allow them to fall back, use a password, may, um, but still make sure it's, um, there's MFA on it. So they're, they're falling back securely and still able to get in um, with this MFA in cases where passwordless you know, falters for a second or, or, or doesn't work. Um, we want to make sure that we can securely enable people to get in even in those cases. You know, I mean, it's it's hard to you know imagine that kind of problem happening a little bit, but as we talk about changing our technologies and rolling out new systems, forms, processes in our organizations, we obviously always want to be a little bit cautious and move slowly there so that you don't disrupt things and, and create issues and problems. So good to know that even if you take this step, you have a fallback net that uh, that can take you back and make everything okay in case anything goes horribly wrong. Totally. Excellent. Well, this seems really, really beautiful and, and simple. And I'm starting in my head thinking, why have we been killing ourselves so long dealing with the pain of passwords when we have this system here? So why didn't we do this 20 years ago? That's such a good question. Um, you know, password, this is really, you know, it, it's, it's very popular in the market right now. I feel like people are talking about it. And it's because there are three trends that are all converging right at the same time that are really, um, in the, they're sort of behind the scenes trends, but they're really important. One is, you know, this one's a little bit older, but most of us have a smartphone in our pocket now that's uh, enabling us to have a sort of something you have factor. Second, the improvement of biometrics is really important. So thinking about, um, you know, five to 10 years ago, Apple just released Touch ID on their, on their phone. It wasn't really, or and on the, the laptop, it wasn't really usable yet. And at Duo, we see this tipping point right around now where this is these are trustworthy enough and usable enough um, technologies that we feel like we can base our whole, uh, base a large part of our authentic authentication on them, uh, Windows Hello being the, the Windows version. And lastly, there's a modern web protocol called FIDO2 that's comprised of WebAuthn and CTAP, which uh, enables the the linking of the device. You know, I've I've mentioned that a couple times and tried to highlight it where, where it's you know the device is the second factor, and that that protocol enables an asymmetric asymmetric um, link between a device and the the service it's logging into. And those three things together, um, you know, having an authenticator in everyone's pocket in a smartphone, the improvement of biometrics, and these modern web protocols like FIDO2 have all made passwordless um, converge right at this moment in 2021.
Okay, so there has been some technological evolution that's facilitated this capability. Uh, certainly, I remember you know the uh, efficacy and uh, the initial biometrics. I had the first laptop that had a fingerprint reader on it for me. I I didn't even use the fingerprint because it was so inaccurate and such a pain. It was easier to just type the password out. So <laughs> I, I remember that pain for sure. And and there there was a lot of questions about how does this work and what does it mean and are there ways to circumvent this and and is that uh, is this are there ways to circumvent uh, the biometric and if so are they easier or not or less difficult than compromising the password itself so uh, a lot of those conversations have happened and then uh, and now we, I think we've kind of moved forward in the establishment that biometrics are a pretty decent way to authenticate and then um and then, yeah, so evolutions in the protocols, it sounds like, that are um, making sure that we have the right device and that we're uh, taking care of the, the communication there to add that second factor. If it just could be um, spoofed, if you will, to look like someone else's device, then, you know, we would want that. But it sounds like uh, WebAuthn and, and the other ones that you mentioned have kind of evolved. Is that is that accurate? Totally. And it's, it's a really good point that, you know, they're they're working in lockstep, so the biometric you know, worries about the biometric, biometric biometric are sort of counterbalanced with the modern protocol or the the, the cryptographic um, keys or tokens that are in the background with the device. So the strength in the device and the strength of the biometric working together are making this much more feasible um, and sort of putting to rest a lot of the worries around either the biometric side of the thing or side of the house or the the device side of the house. So they work together to make passwordless much more viable today than it ever was. Great. Well, you know, to be fair as well, you mentioned a lot that it seems like everybody is talking about passwordless. You, you said that a couple of times. Uh, tell us a little bit about where we differentiate in this sea of so many people talking about uh, uh, passwordless. How do we separate ourselves from other competitors out there? That's a really good question. So there are a couple of ways. One is that um, we want to be agnostic. It's, we're not in the business of locking you into a platform or a certain operating system. So you know, when you look at a company, if you have a, a fleet of devices, um, whether you're using all, you know, Windows devices, Mac devices, even Linux or uh, other types of devices, we want to let you use um, passwordless no matter what your environment like that is, which is important. You know, other providers maybe try to lock you into certain areas or certain parts of that, um, of that ecosystem. A second thing that Duo does really well is um, assessing the posture of a device at the point of authentication. And this is only going to be more important in the passwordless world um, where, you know, if credentials and usernames and passwords aren't something so somebody can steal and spray into an environment and hopefully, um, you know, get a hit. Then they're going to start looking at the device and Duo does a lot in, in, assess in the assessment of a device um, at the point of authentication, whether it's OS is up to date, whether it has an AV agent installed, these other things to make sure that um, at the point of auth, you know, we trust that this device hasn't been compromised because that would be bad news for passwordless. And one last piece that I think Duo does really well is um, assessing the context of every authentication. Um, you know, looking at risk analytics, looking at where those credentials are coming from, what what time they're coming from. You know, do we expect this to happen? Um, Seeing if you had a, a simultaneous login from the other side of the world, which would be physically impossible. Uh, exactly least, right. At least in this dimension, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so th that's exactly right. The um, that last piece is, and so all of that goes into what I would call increasing the trust and authentication. Yes, passwordless is um, is a great tech, but we need to keep in mind um, that overall we want to increase the, the trust in the device. We want to increase the trust in the context and make sure that everything together is bolstering that access security. So um, I would say that's one place that we're really strong is looking at device, looking at context and being agnostic to, you know, what sort of ecosystem or environment you have. So uh, I, I think, um, well, let me tell uh, everybody where to go. If you want more information to learn about what we're doing here uh, with Duo and, and the whole system in and, and general, which has become a really wonderful uh, part of our security portfolio and and, uh, and even in, in our daily lives at Cisco, we use this very heavily, uh, the, the Duo solution that is. So if you want to learn more information, you can go check out duo.com slash duo hyphen presents hyphen passwordless. Check out that link down below. And uh, also, Ted, as you were mentioning, some of the other uh, aspects of Duo and what they're looking at with the context of the logins, 
uh, I think I remember us talking at RSA uh, just about a year ago when we actually did that demo. So if you want to see that or other ThreatWise TV episodes highlighting our technologies, always come visit us at cisco.com slash go slash ThreatWise. But Ted, thanks so much for coming here and thanks for everybody for tuning in to this edition of ThreatWise TV.